In physics and chemistry, have you have you heard of this? Low energy means more stability. Low energy systems means more stable and stuff like that. <laughs> well, why do we say that? What is the meaning of this? I never understood this when I was learning this, mainly because the explanations I got were mostly analogous, like kids at low energy have more stable. They sit in one place, and then they're stable. That's nonsense, <laughs> okay? <laughs> that makes no sense, all right? And so in this video, I wanna talk about exactly what's going on over here. Let's rediscover this principle together. So let me start with an example. Imagine I have two electrons. They are kept at some distance in space, in vacuum, all right? We know what's gonna happen. They're repelling each other and they will go away from each other. But before that happens, I just let them go. And before they start moving, I'm gonna take a picture of them. And let me call that picture, let me call this arrangement as arrangement one. So we start at rest. That's important, we start at rest. And now, what's gonna happen? Well, I know that if I wait for some time, these two electrons would have gone fa slightly farther apart. Okay, and they'll keep moving, but again, I'll take some up a picture at this point. And let me call that picture as picture arrangement two. Okay, let me define what a stability and unstability is, okay? Are, we, are you ready? Okay, we say this arrangement two is more stable than arrangement one. We say arrangement one is unstable, arrangement two is more stable. <laughs> Why? Because by definition, the meaning of stability is you st Takes, you take a set of particles at rest, let them go. Whatever new arrangement comes, by definition, that is stable. <laughs> that's, that's all there is to it. Are you thinking, is that simple? Yes. Whatever fancy definitions your textbook must be giving you, at the heart of it, this is what we mean by stable and unstable. Let me give you one quick another example. Two examples are better than one. Let's say I have two charges, this time one positive, one negative. Again, I start them at rest. Let them be at rest to begin with. Rest, arrangement one. Okay, this is the second example, so I'm gonna put a line over here. All right, now let them go. What's gonna happen? Well, they are gonna attract each other. After some time, they would have come closer to each other. Okay, they would have come closer to each other. Now, again, by definition, I let them go. Now I have a new arrangement, they were at rest. Now I have a new arrangement. So whatever happens, whatever new arrangement you get by definition is more stable compared to this. So this is unstable and this is stable. Why do we say that? Well, we say that because we like to personify nature. We like to think with our emotions and we like to say nature has a preference. And we say that two, arrangement two is more preferred to arrangement one. And the way to test this in your head is we can say, if you start this at rest, we get this. But if you had started this at rest, would you get this? No, you wouldn't get this, right? Therefore, nature prefers two over one, and therefore we say this is two is more stable compared to one. Same thing over here. If you had started th with this at rest, you wouldn't have gotten this. But when you start this at rest, you did get this. So nature prefers two over one, therefore this is more stable compared to this, and that's all there is to it. So if you take your emotions out, <laughs> if you think about preferences, you take them out, then what is stability? How do you know if something is stable or not? Take a system of particles at rest, let them go, whatever new arrangement you get is stable. That's it, that's all there is to it. Now just from this, one thing you can immediately see is that the terms stable and unstable are relative terms. I can only say that one is unstable compared to two. I can only say two is stable compared to one. If I just look at two, this, and I ask you, is this stable or not? That question makes no sense. Stability and unstability are only talked in terms of relative, like you have to compare it. Same thing over here. And that's why I absolutely hate it. When in chemistry, I get annoyed in chemistry, when people say that, hey, you know what? These molecules are stable. You know what? These molecules are unstable. I get annoyed because I say, unstable compared to what? Stable compared to what? Now sometimes it's like understood. For example, if you're talking about the stability of the products, we are comparing it with the stability of the reactants. 
for example, that's what it is. But you need to be always sure what you're talking about. Otherwise, what can happen is, is that stable and unstable are terms we use in our daily lives, and they have very loose meanings. We don't think about what really they mean. And so when we use them in science, it gives us a feeling as if we have understood it. it we feel like, ah, that makes sense. Whereas in reality, you wouldn't. And that's why it's super, super important to be very clear, crystal clear with what it means to be stable and unstable. And now that you understand it, always remember, whenever someone talks about stable and unstable, always ask them, compared to what? Always ask yourself, I'm comparing this system with respect to what? Okay, there's a second thing I want to clarify. There is idea of stable and unstable equilibrium. That's a completely different, that's a slightly, it's, it's a different thing. <laughs> it's a different thing. I can look at a system and I can say, aha, that's at stable equilibrium. I don't have to compare it to anything. And I can look at a system and I can say, aha, that's unstable equilibrium. That's a completely different thing altogether. I'm not talking about that, but let me know if you want to talk, if you want me to talk about that. I can cover that separately in a separate video. But that's a completely separate thing. These are not things at equilibrium, equ equilibria. Equilibrium means balanced forces or no net force. Here there are net forces, so we're not talking about equilibrium. Okay, now let's connect it to energies. My first question to you is, as I go from system one, arrangement one to arrangement two, what do you think happens to the total energy of the particles? Don't worry about whatever you've learned so far, just use some, just use first principles and see whether you can answer this question, okay? The thing that I'm gonna use is law of energy conservation. It says that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. When I went from here to here, okay, the total energy over here, I'm gonna ask myself, did energy get added or removed? And the answer is no. It's a vacuum, let's imagine. Then there was no energy added, no energy removed. The total energy must stay the same. So the total energy did not change. However, if you look at the kinetic energy, that has definitely changed. See, initially the kinetic energy was zero. But when I went from here to here, the particles are now moving. They're moving away from each other. They have some speed. Therefore, the kinetic energy is clearly not zero. So let's say that kinetic energy is some number, let's call that 20. The question we could ask is, hey, where did this 20 energy come from? Because energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Oh, that's where we cook up this new idea called as potential energy. We say that, hey, you know what? There was some energy stored over here, not in terms of kinetic energy, it was stored, the arrangement itself has this energy, it's the energy of the, the very configuration has an energy, we call that as potential energy. But we say that when we went from here to here, oof, some of that potential energy got converted into kinetic energy. That's where that kinetic energy com uh, came from. And therefore, over here, we had some potential energy. And let's just again give some number to it. Let's say the potential energy was 100 to begin with. Then we say that out of that, 20 got converted into kinetic energy. And so the new potential energy now has to be 80 because total energy has to be conserved. And so notice what happened when I went from here to here. Notice what happened to the potential energy. What happened? Hey, it reduced potential energy reduced. And notice when I went from a, when I, when I went towards a more stable arrangement, the potential energy lowered. Let's see if the same thing happens over here. I start from rest. When I go from here to here, clearly they're gonna have, they'll be moving towards each other and therefore they will have some kinetic energy. So when I go from here to here, the kinetic energy has increased. <gasps> Potential energy must have reduced. Can you see how this makes sense now? When I go towards stability, when I go towards stability, potential energy must reduce. Why? Because I start from rest, and when when I go towards stability, when 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 time progresses, whatever arrangement I get, when I start from rest, if there are particles are putting a force on each other, they will start moving. So clearly when I went from unstable to stable, they started moving. And because they started moving, kinetic energy increased, therefore potential energy has reduced. And that's why when you have a more stable, when you're going towards more stability, the potential energy gets lowered. And that's why stable systems have lower potential energy compared, always compared, compared to un stable systems. Does that make sense now? <laughs> That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. But you may ask, Mahesh, then, but why do we talk about potential energy? Why not talk about, okay, there might be several questions for you. One question could be, why talk in terms of potential energy? 
why not talk in terms of kinetic energy? Why do we say that, hey, when you go towards stability, the kinetic energy increase, why can't I say that? The reason you can't say that is because kinetic energy can be converted to something else. For example, in this case, if we were in vacuum, this is the pro this is the situation, but imagine these were two tennis balls, negatively charged tennis balls kept in water. I don't know who would do that and why you would anybody would do that except for when you're conducting some science, hypothetical science experiments. But if this was in water, then what would have happened is that the it, it would co it would collide with the water particles and it would dissipate energy. So that kinetic energy would get converted into heat energy. Okay? And so now what would happen in s arrangement two is that the kinetic energy would have actually gone to zero and all that energy would have been converted to thermal energy. So you would have now thermal energy, that, that all that kinetic energy would have gone to thermal energy. So would it be accurate to say that when I go from an unstable system to stable system in general, that kinetic energy increases? No. But would it be accurate to say that the potential energy decreases? Yes. Because whether the kinetic, kinetic energy increases or not, or whether the kinetic energy has got transferred to thermal energy, light energy, sound energy, whatever energy it is, it comes at the expense of potential energy. And therefore I know for sure with 100% certainty in general, the potential energy must have reduced. That's why we talk in terms of potential energy. We just forget to say it sometimes and therefore we just use the word energy and we say, hey, stable systems have less energy. But remember, we're always talking about potential energy when we say that. The last question you might have is, but Mahesh, why do I need this in the first place? Like, why, why do I need to talk about uh, energies in the first place? I know just by looking at the situation whether something is stable or unstable. I can compare and I can do that, right? True, you can only do that if you started with things at rest. Remember, that's how we think thought about stable and unstable. When things are starting at rest, then I know for sure whatever happens goes towards stab stability. But what if things are not starting with rest? then how do you do it? And things can be complicated. Then the best way is to look at what happens to your potential energy. If it is lowered, you know that system has become stable. If it increases, you know the system has become more unstable. So let me give you the one last example. And then let's wind this up. Oops, so oh, I went black. Okay, all right. So let's imagine that I have um, a positive charge, a negative charge to begin with, and they're moving away from each other. They have some speed and they're moving away from each other. And let's say this is our arrangement one. Oops, okay, this is our arrangement one. After some time, they would have moved away. And let's call this as our arrangement two. Now I ask you, what happened to the stability? Is this more stable, less stable, what has happened? Now can I say that, hey, as time progresses, things become more stable. I can't say that because I didn't start with rest. That can only apply when you start with rest. Okay, that's simple definition of stability and instability. Now that I haven't started with rest, I can no longer say that. So what do I do? Look at potential energy, okay? So I start with, this has some total energy and I know that this total energy stays the same. I'm gonna assume everything is in vacuum. But I know I'm gonna look at kinetic energy and that's how I actually get a clue of what happens to potential energy. When I go from here to here, what happens to kinetic energy? This has some kinetic energy, but as I go from here to here, notice that they are attracting each other. They, are, they, are, they, are, they want to come closer to each other. And because of the attraction, you know, the experience of force, so I'm gonna draw, use pink color to draw the force. Notice the force is this way, the velocity is this way, clearly they're gonna slow down. It's kind of like throwing a ball up, right? Against gravity, it slows down. Against the electrostatic force, these slow down. So what has happened to their speed? Decreased. What has happened to their kinetic energy? Decreased. What has happened to their potential energy, therefore? <gasps> increased. So clearly when I went from here to here, potential energy increased. Can you see that? I, I, I'm using step-by-step -step logical approach to address this. All stems from energy conservation. And because potential energy has increased, now I know, aha, aha, aha. <laughs> this must have now gone towards uh, unstability. So therefore, this was more stable compared to this, and this is unstable or less stable compared to this. So clearly I've gone towards an unstable direction.